Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Diversified Semantic Clear Podcast. Back for the first time in what feels like a really long time, this is Eric Vallo. I'm joined by my trusty companions, Jamie Oswald, Greg Myers. Hello, gentlemen. Good morning. Hello. And in a, and in a fun international twist, we're joined once again for the, long, for the first time in ages, David Poisson, all the way from Paris, yes? Yes, exactly. Good morning, good afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon. Uh, we, we have a fun show planned. Uh, we are going to talk about um, SAP really runs SAP, and we'll we'll talk to David about uh, you know wow how business objects and uh, SAP BI works for SAP as a global organization. But first, community announcements. Anything? Jamie, Greg, David. Next next week is ASTUG annual conference, Sapphire in North America in Orlando. Be there or be square. Jamie's case is going to be square. Uh, I don't know good. that they're typically I'm um, round. It's a good trend. <laughs> right. it's and the this. call for speakers is open for uh, for SBOUC or SABUC or SABOC or whatever we're calling it now, the ASUG SAP Analytics Business Objects User Conference. I just call it Sambuca. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> But call for speakers are open, so don't uh, don't pay for going to the conference. Let let somebody else pick up your ticket in exchange for talking. Yeah, really, what he said. It's a great way to show your stuff, and and this year we're we're in a new destination again, right? Dallas, Fort, Fort Worth. Worth. Yep. Yeah, they're both the same, right? No, no, they're not. Sorry. <laughs> also, all right. Uh, along uh-huh. with that event, the I believe the Dev Wars call for teams is either open or opening soon. Um, so keep up to uh, keep up to date on that and get get in. So, Have they announced what what they're competing against on for? Uh, the charity they ha- they have identified the charity. They have not announced it yet. So that will be a uh, it's it's a good good fit. We'll like it. Good deal. All right. Very good. Anything else before we go? I forgot to turn my phone off. I am rookie at this again. Go. Cool. <laughs> All right. Well, cool. So, um, David, thanks again for joining us. Uh, I, I, I think it's really interesting. I, um, I saw your CIO present um, just a few months ago at um, ASUG Georgia. And he was he was really talking about the topic of, of SAP running SAP and thus thus the inspiration to go straight to the source, you, um, <laughs> to 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 learn more about, you know what it's really like to run SAP business objects, for SAP globally. And I guess the, the first question I have is, you know, tell us what is the the size of the user population and what are some of the more, well let's start there. How, how big is your user base there? Yeah, so potentially we have uh, 65,000 uh, end users, um, which is the uh, the size of the company. And uh, indeed, we have a, a central platform, central organization. So if we accumulate uh, all the potential users, this is uh, our install base. Now, uh, I would say the activity depends really on uh, uh, the line of business and the, the type of solution. We can say that we have uh, everywhere active users, of course, because uh, some of these uh, uh, reports are more or less uh, uh, completely uh, stuck to a a business process. Uh, But I would say if I wanted to to highlight some figures, uh, probably the the most important one is uh, about the uh, sales organization. Uh, where we have uh, 5,000 people uh, using actively uh, the the sales pipeline solution, which is based on the um, Explorer sales pipeline uh, that they can use on their mobile device, and also a set of uh, web intelligence reports that they can also uh, use on their mobile device or on their laptop. So this is probably one of the um, most uh, prominent examples of uh, uh, yeah, uh, utilization of uh, BI for real uh, business purpose. That's very cool. So, what are the sales organization? Is there are, are they chiefly focused in the United States, or is that globally the sales organization? 
It, it's global in the sales organization. They did a tremendous job to align the, the processes across the regions to make sure that there is one single solution out of the uh, uh, or CRM uh, for uh, yeah uh, uh, to, to be used across the regions. And leveraging CRM on HANA, so which means that we have a high performance and no latency in getting the data on your uh, in, in your report in your pipeline. I like how you got that right in there like that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, with a user population that big, how often do you get to complain, hey, my report slow, business objects is broken? Uh, that's a, a good question. I would say that uh, uh, we have now quite a, a high level of uh, stability since we are on the BI 4.1. Uh, which was uh, not the case in the past with the BI 4.0 where we had uh, some challenges, some serious challenges, but the good news is that uh, since we are on BI 4.1, uh, the stability is really there, the quality is there, and uh, our business objects platform team has uh, far less uh, uh, to do in terms of uh, incident management and so on. So uh, we are, uh, since the uh, end of last year, in a much more comfortable uh, situation with uh, a feeling that we have a, a very major platform here. And uh, uh, if you ask me how often, I would say uh, by default, um, not that frequently, a uh, few times per quarter, especially on the Explorer side, when we reach the, the limit of uh, uh, the, the, the possibilities of our platform. This is yeah, I would say where we have uh, yeah some still some issues because we are a very very large uh, explorer deployment. So can you tell us a little bit about the the size of your business objects deployment? Like how many servers is that, and what kind of team do you need to support that? Uh, so we have uh, <coughs> sorry, um, around. Um, <coughs> 40 servers in total um, on <coughs> uh, four different uh, landscapes. <coughs> Sorry, four different landscapes, and uh, our production landscape is uh, with about 10 VMs, uh, where we have the CMS, <coughs> the FRS, um, plus uh, Web Intelligence, Crystal Reports, Explorer, Design Studio, and uh, yeah, uh, on the uh, front end side we have uh, <coughs> Tomcat servers. So it's not that big, actually, uh, 10, uh, 10 VMs for a production landscape, but this is uh, fair enough currently in regards of uh, the, the level of utilization, and it allows us to have this uh, uh, very good stability as well. Good, so one important thing, uh, uh, sorry, uh, maybe I can continue with uh, one element. Uh, we have a, a full virtual Platform, so which means that there is no uh, uh, physical machine behind, and uh, this is <coughs> extremely important because when whenever there is a patching, we can create some images and we can clone. And for this, uh, at the end of the day, our uh, business objects platform team is uh, six people, which is not that much for the for the whole company plus a small uh, offshore team uh, uh, yeah, in uh, one of our uh, uh, partners. So really, it's uh, something that is uh, quite sustainable and, and uh, quite cheap at the end of the day. Now, <laughs> I, I'm curious about what all tools people get to use. So I know you mentioned Explorer specifically and, and some reports, but since I'm assuming licensing is no issue, does everybody really have access to sort of whatever they want, um, and do you find that, well, so so does everybody have access to, to all of the, the business object tools, so analysis, the Lumeras, the, the, all of that good stuff, and then also, how do you handle, like, your content creation? Do you have a centralized reporting team? Is it more decentralized by service line, or how, how does that all work? Yeah. Let me describe a little bit uh, our, our organization around the, the uh, BI topics. Um, so first of all, in terms of uh, what is in use in the company, and, and you're right that we have the luxury of uh, having unlimited access to, uh, uh, to, to the tools. 
and all of them are, are used actually. So uh, the client tools, so the, the server tools, uh, business objects explorer, uh, widely uh, used. And of course now we are uh, uh, transitioning to Lumira, to SAP Lumira, especially uh, uh, with the, the server edition that is coming up. And we have in the dashboard area, we used to have a lot of dashboards, so uh, Aka Excelsius. And now more and more we are moving to Design Studio. So here as well, uh, there is a, a transition. Uh, web intelligence is still uh, uh, heavily used uh, for uh, very advanced uh, ad hoc reporting. And uh, yeah, we, we <laughs> sometimes, uh, uh, I would say, surprise our end users um, when we create a web intelligence reports because there are so many possibilities now with uh, uh, the input controls and so on, you can create really dashboards at the end of the day with Webby. So uh, it helps a lot. And uh, Lumira, Lumira desktop is uh, emerging, I would say. Uh, it's still a growing market if I wanted to, to describe this, uh, but the, the level of adoption is, is growing. And uh, as we have um, in parallel a strong integration of uh, strong deployment of HANA in-house, uh, this definitely goes together. Now, uh, how are we organized? Yes, we have a central organization uh, called Enterprise Analytics and Planning. Uh, who is uh, yeah, defining the, the strategy, um, some piece of governance, especially for the, for the data governance. Uh, we have also a virtual team uh, with an expertise on all the, the, the front end suite and talking to the lines of business where there are uh, BICOEs, uh, especially for the largest uh, lines of business. And we work together on the same platform, which is the platform that we host and we create the framework, so the data models, uh, the most complex um, dashboards, for instance. Our team is also, uh, let's say, uh, getting the expertise on the new tools, the new versions in advance, and then we share this expertise, this best practice uh, to, the, to the BICOEs of the lines of business in order that uh, they, yeah, they, they, they follow this best practice and avoid to go in a direction that will not be the, the right one. In terms of uh, uh, not using the right tool or not taking the right approach and so on. So we always try to, to, to stay in advance and then to keep this community around us in order that whatever we do, we can share with uh, this community. And it also um, uh, deals with uh, uh, UI best practice and so on. So do you do you send some of your line of business COEs to like the to tech ed to learn about new things? I mean is it is that do they go to events? Do they talk to other people, right? So I know in my organization we always want to network with other companies that use business objects, right? To say, well what are you trying to do? What what's worked, what hasn't worked, etc. Do do people within SAP do that, or is that sort of a no-no because you can't sit there and complain about, you know, some feature that's missing or something like that? The the, the key message for uh, CIO is I want to have everyone in my organization uh, meeting at least face-to-face -face a customer this year. So that is really a, a very strong message here, and of course this is this is not possible because we have uh, more than uh, 1,000 people. Uh, but yeah, that's a key um, uh, key uh, priority in our in our mission uh, to at maximum share our expertise or experience uh, with external customers, or also uh, to talk to the customer facing organizations, so pre-sales, field service, and so on. We are continuously in this model uh, where. Uh, whatever we uh, we develop, we deliver, uh, the experience that we uh, we get out of this, also the challenges, we share this openly uh, to the partners and the customers. And usually it sounds like uh, it's something really true, sounds real, and uh, this is why it's uh, so important for the customers to uh, hear uh, these messages with, uh, yeah, uh, when they come back in their company, they say, 
I met somebody from internal IT and this is the way they do in their company and yeah they explained us that they have pretty much uh, the, the same challenge and this is the way uh, they did to, to, uh, um, to, 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 to solve this. So uh, with this we have a great relationship and a great network with uh, customers and partners. I would, I'd like to turn that question around 180 degrees though. You know, have you found that you and your team or the analytics requirements you have or even your business, what kind of influence have you had on the product direction with product group, whether the platform or the BI tools themselves? Uh, I'm not sure I, I got your question because the voice broke a couple of times. Can you please repeat? Sorry about that. Um, I, I guess succinctly, do you find that your platform and your users and the, and the analytics you generate influence SAP's products as well? Do you have a direct bat phone to the product group? Um, yes, and sometimes this is not seen that well uh, by my <laughs> colleagues from development. <laughs> because uh, uh, they see me as the internal uh, 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 internal guy who will create some issues. Um, but I can tell you, I do it uh, in a constructive manner, of course. Um, sometimes I, uh, I escalate to upper management and to the head of uh, uh, the, the, the standard development organization, clearly. Sometimes we, uh, we test the product in a customer validation or in a beta phase, and our feedback is clearly read. But the idea behind is definitely that we continue working together uh, to make sure that at the end of the day, when it goes out, it's green. And with this, I mean, we have, yeah, quite a good experience. And also, when it did not happen for any reason, interesting experience that, uh, yeah, the issues were um, uh, met uh, by external customers uh, once the product was on the marketplace. And here it's much more difficult to uh, to um, yeah come back to address uh, this kind of issue. So we rather um, face this internally, even if for me it's more work, more risk, and I have some duty, yeah, a lot of duties in front of my internal customers. But they also understand our role here, and this is why we uh, are permanently in this kind of uh, uh, approach. So my, my follow-on question to that is, did they make you submit an SAP incident? <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to ask, I, I suppose you have a similar relationship with the, uh, the SAP support organization as well then, right? Uh, yes. Um, sometimes we work together with the support and the development organization because for them it's the first time they see this in a real customer environment, so it's uh, generally new to, uh, to everyone. So with this, we have a great relationship, and uh, usually we have the hot fixes earlier that we can deploy in, in our landscape, and then uh, whenever a customer is facing the same issue, it can go very rapidly to be addressed as well. So AGS is uh, frequently on our landscape as well, and when we have something that is quite uh, risky, I would say, uh, then we engage with, uh, with the uh, support organization at the same time as the, the development organization. So you're the lab mice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you, um, so I think in a lot of organizations right now, IT departments are struggling with, with uh, you know, departmental solutions, I think is what, is what they're popularly called, like ClickView, Tableau, you know, cloud stuff like Domo, where people can just go out and buy it. Um, do you have any of that, right? I mean, I, I realize that there are still fringes of BI that, that perhaps SAP hasn't delivered a solution for yet. Um, how does that work? You know, five years ago, obviously, you didn't have anything like Tableau or ClickView, you know, and now you have something more like that. So did you used to have pockets of those things? And if so, when SAP develops a product, do you get to very satisfyingly go and zap those uh, installations and convert everything over? Or just how does that work? Well, maybe yeah. even one more scenario of that is you, you've made an acquisition and SAP just gobbled up a company and they had Tableau or ClickView. Have you, have you had to squash those out too? I'd love to hear more. <laughs> so we used to have 
within SAP uh, big view uh, to be to be honest with you and uh, it was uh, yeah yeah horrible <laughs> no uh, I mean this is a, a good a good source of inspiration of course and uh, we decided to uh, uh, roll it off of course uh, when we had uh, uh, something that uh, uh, could come as a replacement because uh, business must uh, run this is a first priority and uh, it's mandatory that uh, we assure uh, the, the continuation without any disruption so um, basically uh, any innovation in the company uh, normally comes from a business problem this is the the, the most important source of um, uh, generation of new innovations and this is where our role as an internal organization is so important because we are always uh, yeah, in contact with end users, with internal customers but they have exactly the same expectations as the external ones so we hear very strongly their messages when they are struggling in their processes, in their business because uh, uh, our solutions do not uh, fulfill their needs and it can be just a functionality in one of the existing tools it can be a completely new tool and this is where uh, yeah we, we came to uh, uh, to the situation where even we had some competing tools uh, in-house and uh, based on this uh, the reaction was very strong to say okay so we need to come on this market and uh, as of today, uh, this implementation has been rolled off uh, because we could uh, move uh, ahead with uh, SAP Lumira. So, uh, of course, we did not try to copy, uh, no doubt about this. The idea was really to come on this market segment uh, with some value proposition and uh, a lot of added value uh, that would convince the existing customers and the new potential customers. But all innovations in-house generally come from a business problem, a business need. So, so what is that next business need? Uh, you know, do you, what, what do your internal customers clamor for that, that you're not delivering yet, that they might be looking <laughs> at some external stuff for? Yes, uh, that's a good point here. Uh, we are in the middle of a transformation. I would not say it's coming from the customers. It's all together that we want to really take the benefit of HANA. Uh, but this is not what my end user would ask. My end user would ask, I want to have really uh, an easy reporting capability when I am in my ERP or CRM and um, that I can immediately jump into a report, compare uh, my figures in my CRM on my uh, uh, orders or uh, in ERP on my invoices and uh, double check uh, in my report and so on. So basically this is what we call the uh, CRM and uh, ERP <coughs> HANA analytics and uh, this is what we are currently working on and uh, that uh, we have unlimited capability for the end users to create ad hoc operational reports out of ERP and CRM. So this is a big topic currently for us uh, for this year we expect that with this if we are able to <coughs> strongly simplify and uh, this chain uh, in the past it was going via SAP BW for any kind of reporting now we have the possibility to uh, uh, to go um, in this direction then that would be a, a tremendous uh, uh, element of simplification and adoption and the second thing I would emphasize here is on a UI point of view, user experience is really key. And um, yeah, we used to have a <clears throat> typically in dashboards, if you think about the dashboard a couple of years ago, that was basically a combination of different uh, bar charts, pie charts, and so on. So it was great because that was flashy, that was really uh, handsome, uh, but what is the message behind? Uh, it's very very hard to interpret this when you present it to the executive what uh, will he say in the first uh, glance he will say looks really nice but then what is the interpretation and for this you will send out a powerpoint with all the details and so on so the new trend and we are um, yeah uh, working actively on this is that or dashboards and reports and any kind of a set should be self-explaining uh, to, um, to the end user and especially to the executives. 
So which means we are going much more in the um, concept of uh, tiles, where you have a, a big figure, um, a big KPI, and uh, it's green, it's uh, red, and there is a trend, and there is a clear, a clear message behind. And with this, the end user can use his dashboard or report as a newspaper, and he can really uh, go into the detail of uh, uh, whatever he, he finds uh, as interesting, he would just tap on the tile and then go into the details where he finds again the, uh, the bar chart or pie chart or whatever. But really the first element, the first uh, thing he would uh, have in front of him is uh, this uh, home page, this newspaper page where he has all his titles, headlines with uh, green figures, uh, red figures, any action that he needs to take. We are also moving one step ahead uh, with uh, infographics, which is a new concept uh, that is coming everywhere as well. And uh, we are working on some uh, uh, UI concepts to have more integration of uh, uh, these infographics into our uh, reports and dashboards. And by the way, this is coming up in uh, uh, the latest version of uh, SAP Lumira. So we are actively working on it. Great. You know, it, uh, so... <laughs> Uh, sorry, I'm trying to put my question together in my head. So when you think about those major reporting paradigms, you know, data discovery, um, just enterprise reporting, and data visualization with dashboards, you know, how would you maybe categorize in percentages how SAP shakes out in terms of that type of visualization then across your user base? Is it, is it you know, still 80% enterprise reporting, or has that been reduced down to 10%? What, what do you think that makeup looks like? So uh, <clears throat> what we have is a lot of operational reports. This is, yeah, really the, 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 mm, the largest uh, uh, majority. So analysis for office typically is probably the, uh, the, the widest uh, uh, solution uh, in-house. Uh, so all these operational reports that everyone is, is using is the, the, the first thing. And then at the uh, other <coughs> extreme, we have a, a few dashboards for small groups of executives. Um, in between, uh, I would say uh, the, 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 one of the key success criteria is how does it directly impact my, my business. We have a number of examples where we spent months uh, developing a dashboard that is really nice looking. But what does it tell me at the end of the day? Not so much. So we have plenty of dashboards like this um, and, uh, and uh, with a level of utilization that is really low. Um, as soon as this would impact my own business, my own figures, then we have a high level of utilization. Sales pipeline is, uh, is the best example. If you're bad in your, uh, in your sales, you will not get your bonus at the end of the year. So everyone is uh, using it heavily. It's not fantastic. I would say uh, it's, it's great, nice looking, uh, but this is really key. And, and the sales managers as well use it because they can drill down to where we are late. So typically here, it's actionable BI. Um, as uh, soon as, uh, as long as we are in this uh, kind of situation, we can deliver whatever we want. So I would say uh, more than the tool, it's really uh, what is the purpose of what we deliver uh, that is important. Fair enough. So when you um when you want to get your team psyched up, do you bring in like an Ingo or a Timo or? somebody like that to, to talk to him and get them all jazzed up? Emo or, or Timo? Sorry, I, I did not get your well, question. I, I said when, um, you know, when you're trying to get your team excited about stuff, do you, do you bring in, like, a Timo or an Ingo or, or one of the people that, you know, goes ah, out okay. and talks about business objects externally? Like, do they get yeah. to, to get you people jazzed up? Yeah, yeah, so uh, uh, we are uh, quite uh, uh, regularly in touch with, uh, 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 with uh, Timo, uh, especially because uh, we are uh, sitting uh, um, here closely together, and he 
knows that uh, when he wants to have some real stories, he can come to me. And uh, the other way around, uh, um, whenever he needs to talk to a, a customer, he can come to me to have some real assets. So we do this uh, regularly. Uh, we turn some of our uh, uh, best uh, concrete uh, scenarios uh, into uh, things that we can demo, and demo as well the approach, which is uh, really important. So this is the, the way as well we uh, marketize a little bit uh, SAP runs SAP via our CIOs and, uh, and uh, top executives because uh, they are in a lot of uh, customer meetings or CIO meetings and also via uh, Timo and, and uh, the other folks, Nick Smith as well and so on. So typically next week I'm also at Sapphire and I will circulate at the analytics campus uh, to explain what we are doing internally and uh, working on this with my colleagues from solution management. So we have different stories uh, um, based on whatever the customer would like to know and if the customer has no clue about uh, um, what is business objects, he can also come to me. So it's really uh, for everyone. Very cool. So you guys are really engaging the idea of the internal BI community, as it were, as well, right? I mean, that's part of your DNA there? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And um, I'm always uh, observing uh, how uh, uh, BI is uh, moving on internally. Um, <laughs> it's interesting to see the, the evolution uh, over the last uh, 10 years, for instance. Uh, starting with the, the business object, uh, full client 6.5, <laughs> uh, 10 years ago, and then moving to the, to the platform concept um, in 2005 and 6 with uh, uh, BOXI or 2, which was yeah. really a, a big shift and, and a lot of challenges, a lot of change management. Uh, to finally get the adoption and, and hear from my end users, oh, you know what, we gave you a lot of problems uh, in, this, uh, in this move, but now we are happy with uh, Webby, we are happy with the platform, we are happy to use one single report instead of uh, having uh, very different versions of uh, uh, the same report. And we figured out that, uh, okay, so we had reduced the number of reports. We did not uh, increase uh, the, the adoption. The next uh, trend has been uh, two, three years ago uh, with uh, the, the mobility. Interesting because we started uh, yeah, uh, as well a long time ago with uh, BI Mobile on BlackBerry. It was a little bit difficult, but with uh, Mobi on iPad, here again, we have seen a tremendous uh, uh, evolution, and especially the, all the executives becoming active users, giving feedback, uh, doing th doing this by themselves. So, uh, yeah, next uh, next trend, and uh, I'm permanently observing uh, now mobility is a little bit away. I would say uh, there are mobile fans and uh, and uh, and the others. And I'm just observing what is uh, yeah, the, the main uh, hurdle uh, to go to the next level of adoption uh, in order that we can continue on uh, yeah, getting more and more users and keeping them active. So typically what I was mentioning about what is in your dashboard, uh, this is one of the, the, the best examples of uh, um, yeah, the, the, the recent observations between yeah, something that is just nice looking and something that is really actionable uh, or um, yeah, uh, bringing you the, the decisions that you, you need to take. Interesting. I, I, I've been terribly distracted because I couldn't help but notice you you didn't name Business Objects XI back there, so you, <laughs> you clearly <laughs> skipped. <laughs> we talked to you. Okay, we don't have to spend any time there. Um, so um, I think m my last question maybe will bring us to a close. Uh, you How know, many desk reports do you still have? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have two more questions. <laughs> That's fair That's answer. <laughs> what, what was the, the first one? Jamie wants to know how many more desk reports you have left. <laughs> how many desk... Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, actually, uh, uh, the thing is that we are multiplying the, the devices, so now when I have to travel, 
uh, yeah, typically next week to Orlando, I will have desktop and uh, and uh, iPad and iPhone and uh, uh, Android tablet and so on. So uh, yeah, we have a lot of uh, stuff here. Uh, the interesting thing from a technological standpoint is the uh, the standardization uh, with HTML5. We want to have uh, one single client uh, for any type of device, and I think this was the right approach in all cases. Um, all right, so uh, just assume you have the entire business objects community listening to this podcast, even if that's not true. Um, you know, any any parting advice for uh, for a customer that that wants to be as awesome as you are at running business objects? Um, yes. Yeah, so, um, whatever the the release, if it is a three dot one, if it is a, a very new business objects uh, customer, I would uh, strongly encourage you to go uh, to uh, to BI four dot one um, because uh, uh, the platform is really major. And um, we, we can say uh, whatever uh, we want. Uh, there is nothing more stable and uh, uh, more um, yeah, reliable than a, a webby report, for instance. So uh, we definitely, uh, uh, let's say, rely on, on web intelligence, for instance, for the, for the corporate reporting. The rest is more to, to bring more agility uh, or yeah, some, some more local needs like uh, analysis for office for, for uh, um, yeah, uh, analysts, uh, financial analysts, or Lumira and Explorer for ad hoc uh, explorations and so on, uh, which means that basically uh, with this uh, we serve the, the whole community with a, a small team and um, a low activity in terms of TCO. So really, go ahead and uh, and and get there. Uh, whatever your landscape is, if it is behind SAP BW, if it is behind any kind of relational database, uh, don't be afraid and, and go ahead. Awesome. David, thanks for joining us. Uh, I know it's maybe getting late in your day, though, but uh, it's it's been fun to learn. You get to peek behind the curtain once in a while, and it was, it was enjoyable. <laughs> um, so, did you mention? Will we see you next week at Sapphire? Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. I'm looking forward. Awesome. We won't see Jamie though. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, hopefully, we'll catch you again soon. Well, Cheers, pleasure. Thank you. Bye. This podcast is hosted and sponsored by EV Technologies. Visit us on the net at savethecms.com. Peace, Slayer!